The second developer preview of Android 13 is now live, letting brave Android fans get an early look at what's coming in the next version of the OS, ahead of its launch in the late summer. Take a sec to subscribe for more Android 13 coverage, and we'll jump into what's new. First up, and perhaps the biggest deal, is the new notification permission. Currently in Android, apps don't explicitly need permission to send you notifications, but that's about to change in Android 13, and we're seeing it for the first time here in Developer Preview 2. Existing apps will trigger this prompt to ask you if you want to receive notifications, and new apps will do the same when you install them. It's a great way to avoid increasingly noisy apps delivering notification nags for non-essential things. Now notifications require your permission, just like any other potentially bothersome feature. There's also improved text rendering for many languages using character sets besides the Latin alphabet. In Japanese, for instance, sentences will wrap between lines more naturally instead of just character by character. In other languages such as Tamil and Burmese, where line height issues sometimes cause parts of characters to be chopped off, Android 13 introduces improved line spacing. And in languages like Japanese and Chinese, where you type phonetically as opposed to inputting characters directly, Android 13 improves auto-completion when searching so you don't have to wait to commit characters. This new API doesn't appear to be used anywhere in any of the preloaded apps in this build, but it should be a big time saver once it's rolled out. And in a related change, the per app language setting that was announced back with Developer Preview 1 is now actually live, with apps letting you choose either one of your system languages or any from a very long list of supported languages. Not every app supports this feature, but a surprising number of popular apps will let you apply a specific language in this latest Android 13 preview. Bluetooth LE Audio is also new in Developer Preview 2. This is the latest wireless audio standard that, combined with the right headphones, can save power when you're listening to music, podcasts, or whatever else. In much the same way that regular Bluetooth LE made wearable gadgets more battery efficient, LE Audio should give a battery bump for audio playback. Android 13 is also adding support for the Color V1 standard for color vector fonts. What that means is things like emoji should scale up to larger sizes much more clearly, without the blurring that you get from just taking a raster image and upsizing it. Basically means better looking big emoji in Android 13, and that's something we can all get behind. There are a bunch of smaller design changes in this build that we'll get to later, but the biggest that we're seeing is this new media card design, which is larger and uses the album art or YouTube thumbnail as a backdrop. Google has messed with the way this particular slice of UI works quite a lot over the past few Android versions, but in Android 13 I think they've landed on something that actually looks pretty good, combining the Material U aesthetic with a decent level of functionality. There are a ton of other little UI changes that have been dug up by Michel Rachman over at Esper, far too many to get into in this video. The main ones I've found pretty interesting are the addition of a long press support for notifications to open them in split screen mode. It's another way to respond to messages without interrupting what you're doing in the background. There's another change that's sure to mess with years of muscle memory if you're a long-time Android user. The settings and power button have been moved to the lower portion of the notification shade, perhaps to distinguish them better from the rest of the quick settings area. As with all visual tweaks though, there's no guarantee any of these changes will make it into the final version. A few more quick-fire pixel feature additions, there's now a haptic strength slider for alarm and media vibrations, just like we had for calls and notifications in Android 12. Dark mode can now be set to automatically come on at your preset bedtime if you have one set. And interestingly, Android 13 on big screens has grown an app draw button, which kind of resurrects a bit of Android iconography that we haven't seen for quite some time, while also making for a welcome addition to the new tablet UI from Android 12L. This should actually be the final Android 13 developer preview. The next build in April should kick off the Android 13 beta program ahead of the Google I.O. conference the following month. That's where we'd expect to hear much more about what the final form of Android 13 will look like as Google approaches the home stretch of development likely ahead of a final launch in August. Stay tuned and subscribe to Android Central so you don't miss the latest on Android 13 in the run-up to launch. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.